from the Home Slice News Center. This is the Daily Slice for Monday, April 11th, 2022. I'm D. Ray Knight, and this is what's going on. Here's the latest on the war in Ukraine. Britain's Ministry of Defense says Ukraine has beaten back several assaults by Kremlin forces in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions, resulting in the destruction of Russian tanks, vehicles, and artillery. In an intelligence update released this morning, the ministry says Russian shelling in the two eastern regions is continuing. Russia's continued reliance on unguided bombs decreases their ability to discriminate when targeting and conducting strikes, while greatly increasing the risk of civilian casualties, the ministry said. The ministry also said Russia's prior use of phosphorus munitions in Donetsk raises the possibility that they may be used in Mariupol as the battle for the city on Ukraine's southern coast intensifies. In news closer to home, a South Dakota lawmaker who said he gave legal advice to Attorney General Jason Roundsburg following a fatal car accident says he will not vote on whether to impeach Roundsburg when the House convenes tomorrow. Republican Representative Scott Odenbach sent a letter to the House Speaker which says he plans to recuse himself from the vote and won't attend the proceedings in Pierre. Odenbach, who at the time was running for the House seat he eventually won, says Roundsburg reached out to him for input on a public statement that was released two days after the Attorney General struck and killed Joe Bover, a pedestrian who was walking along a rural road in September of 2020. Meanwhile, Pennington County Sheriff Kevin Tome hopes Roundsburg is impeached. Amy Rose has more. Pennington County Sheriff Kevin Tome says he hopes House lawmakers impeach Attorney General Jason Roundsburg. House lawmakers meet Tuesday to consider whether to impeach the state's top cop for his conduct surrounding a fatal car crash that took the life of pedestrian Joe Beaver. Over a year ago, three South Dakota law enforcement organizations called on Attorney Jason Roundsburg to resign from office. At the time, those three groups said Roundsburg's involvement in the death of Joe Beaver resulted in a lack of confidence in his ability to carry out his duties as the chief law enforcement officer in South Dakota. Sheriff Tome says that position remains the same. An update to the Black Hills War Monument is underway, with plans for an unveiling later on this year. The goal, says Ed Manzano, president of the Black Hills War Monument Association, is to bring the public space current in its representation of all U.S. wars and conflicts. This upgrade will cover the War on Terror conflicts from 2001 to 2021, also honoring Cold War and POW MIA servicemen from the Black Hills. The monument upgrade will also add military service flags, the POW MIA flag, and a South Dakota state flag to the monument site. In national and international news, less than a week after announcing that Tesla CEO Elon Musk would join its board of directors, Twitter is reversing course. Twitter CEO Parag Agarwal announced the news, which followed a weekend of Musk tweets suggesting changes to Twitter, including making the site ad-free. Nearly 90% of Twitter's 2021 revenue came from ads. Musk, it was revealed last week, had quickly amassed a massive stake in Twitter to become its largest shareholder. Agarwal didn't offer an explanation for the reversal, but said that the decision was made by Musk. President Biden is going to announce a new head of the ATF. Chrissy Davies has more. President Joe Biden is set to announce that he is nominating an Obama-era U.S. attorney to run the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. That's according to six people familiar with the matter who spoke to the Associated Press. The announcement of the nomination of Steve Deidelbach is expected Monday as the Biden administration unveils its formal rule to rein in ghost guns. Those are privately made firearms without serial numbers that are increasingly cropping up at crime scenes. Tiger Woods had the worst Masters performance of his professional career as his second straight 78 on Sunday left him at a 13 over for the tournament. Still, he considers this one of his greatest achievements in golf. Woods played in his first real tournament since a car wreck 14 months ago left him with horrific leg injuries. He started out with an electrifying 71, but he had nothing left in the tank for the weekend. The world number one player, Scotty Scheffler, won the green jacket, capping off an amazing two months of his career with four victories and six starts. He won by three shots over Rory McIlroy. Your weather forecast from the Home Slice Weather Center. Cloudy today in a high of 52. Rain is possible tonight with a low of 33. And that was your Daily Slice for Monday, April 11th, 2022. The Daily Slice is a production of Home Slice Media Group, hosted by D. Ray Knight with Amy Rose and Chrissy Davies. Executive producer Mark Houston. Engineered by Chris Jackwes. I'm D. Ray Knight. Have a great day.